basically my concept of of playing the double bass is that even though the instruments are tuned differently, the left one's tuned a little bit higher than the right one, um, they, the, the function basically sounds the same. So I don't really bother leading with my left foot, I be, unless I'm playing a solo of constant eighth notes and soloing over it. But um, basically what I'll do is always lead with my right foot, and I always imitate what I've done with my hands with my feet. So these exercises get into developing that, those kinds of techniques that I use in my fills and in my solo. The first one starts, starts out basically just with doing right, left with the hands, and then right, left with the feet. So we have this. Now next, we move on to doing four beats with the hands and then four beats with the feet. Once again, right, left, right, left, and then right, left, right, left with the feet. step then is to do it in triplets where you have three beats with the hands and then three beats with the feet. Once again, feet imitating hands, so you're always going right, left, right, and then right, left, right with the feet. So. next section deals with doing three beats with the hand and then three beats with the feet, but in sixteenth notes with a double with the hands and a double with the feet to, to make it come out right in a bar of 4-4 four, four time. And then finally we have two beats with the hands and then four beats with the feet. So it's a rhythm that's in a sextuplet. And that sounds like this. Now, in the next section, we actually get into the sort of melodic call and answer thing that I did between my toms and my bass drums. And the rhythm that I've written out here is just a simple quarter note and eighth note rhythm with a couple of flams in it in cut time. And that sounds like this. And then you play that beat and use the same sticking as indicated with the feet. So it's like this. So when you do that slow like that, it's, it's pretty simple. But when you speed it up, it sounds sort of like the things I was doing in my solo, like this. Now, the next section gets a little bit more intricate. It's um, sort of a 16th note, an 8th note figure. And it's written like this. And then with the feet. And it sounds simple at this tempo, but when you speed it up, it sounds like the things I was doing in my solo that are like this. So, basically these are the techniques that I've used to gain what I've got, and I'm sure with a little bit of work you can take them much further than I've taken them.
of people ask, how do I practice double bass drum? How did I get into that whole concept of playing double bass drum? I actually treated them as another pair of hands, except they're just a different shape. And they usually have, uh, you know, shoes covering them. Um, but apart from that, I, I give them the same attitude as my hands, but I allow for the limits of the feet, so I slow everything down. So I play a series of exercises, which I would play on the snare drum, single stroke, double stroke, I try a little bit of triple stroke, I play some paradiddles on the bass drums, um, and the other thing I do is play rhythms, play a little solo on bass drums. And that really helps to loosen up the feet. It's very important to, to really find out your limit. I find with bass drum playing, if you're relaxed, you can get to a certain speed. And then if you really tense up and you're sort of on the nerve, you can get it quite quickly. But there's really no control. And if you try to slow it down a little from that quick speed, it's it, you lose it. So it's very, uh, it's very interesting, actually, how pure control over the feet, how slow it can actually be. So there's nothing wrong with practicing very, very slowly. Again, I think it's accuracy. It's giving the notes each a full value. Velocity is very important. And also being seated and relaxed. So the first exercise, really, is just single strokes very slowly. When I practice, I tend to keep my heels down. I don't really know why. This never happens when I play, um, you know, when I'm playing for real, except when I play quietly, my heels can drop. But for practicing, for some reason, I prefer to keep my heels on the footplate. So, just basically, one hit on each drum. And then try it really, really quietly. Single strokes, a little bit faster. The next exercise would be double strokes, two on each bass drum. And again, just very relaxed and very slow. A little bit faster. And then occasionally I do attempt three strokes on each, like this. And of course, there's the old paradiddles. Again, single paradiddles would be the first one. And a double paradiddle. And a triple paradiddle.
and then we can put all three of those together. So you play two singles, two doubles, and two triples. And then you can just play anything, anything that comes into your head. Playing two bass drums can really add another dimension to your playing. Now, I'd like to show you a few different ways that I use them in uh, my soloing, playing beats, and playing fills. Now, generally, when I solo and play fills, I use three kinds of techniques. First one is what I call question-answer, copycat, what have you. Play something with your hands, mimic it with your feet, like this. Something along those lines. Another technique I use involves playing around with your hands and then, at random, doubling some of those licks with your feet, like this. Now, a third technique that I use involves a continuous flow of notes, sixteenths or triplets between the hands and the feet. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of hand-feet patterns. I want to work with one for the moment. It's the first pattern you probably work with when you're practicing double bass drums. Four note pattern, two hands, two feet. Some people call these quads, and I love that word. Okay. Hand, hand, foot, foot. Now, if you notice, I just played at three different speeds. That's because when I'm using the two bass drums, I often like to switch gears and slow things down and speed them up. Always in time, though. Now, I'm playing both hands on one drum, snare drum. I can also do two hands anywhere I want, like this. Another thing to do is to put one hand on one drum, one hand on another, like this. It's a totally different sound. Another pattern that I like to use is a six note pattern. Either four notes in the hands, two in the feet, or two notes in the hand, four in the feet. I'll start with four with the hands, two with the feet. I'll play them all on one drum first. Or I can put two notes on a drum. Or I can put one note on each drum.
So now we'll just play a little bit and put all these three different um, patterns together. The quads, uh, the triplet or sextuplet patterns, and then these six note groupings. This is the basis of the system of playing I use in my book. I call it the single stroke system. Using it, I play all my bass drum rhythms as if they were part of the single stroke roll led by my main bass drum. Using this single stroke roll as a basis, I can create rhythms by simply removing notes from the roll while playing the remaining notes as if the roll were continuous. I'll always start and come out of every pattern on my main bass drum. Applying this system to 16th notes, my right foot plays all the 8th notes, and my left foot plays between the 8th notes, or on the E's and U's. Besides having a systematic way of playing each rhythm, using this system will give each rhythm a consistent sound, with my right foot on the down beats and my left foot on the up beats. I can now use my second bass drum to add to a rhythm that would commonly be played on one bass drum. In this next demonstration, I'm going to play an eighth note rhythm between my main bass drum and my snare. By gradually bringing in my second bass drum, I'll create sixteenth note rhythms. Notice that my main bass drum will remain the same throughout.
In this demonstration, I'm playing a paradiddle and some paradiddle variations over 16th note bass drum rhythms. Practicing mixed sticking patterns over different bass drum rhythms will develop independence between the hands and feet. A popular concept in double bass drumming is breaking up both hands and both feet to form hand foot combination patterns. In dealing with 16th notes, I can break up the hands and feet in any multiples that will add up to 16. Two good patterns to practice to begin with are breaking up the hands and feet in multiples of twos and fours. When playing these patterns, I use the same single stroke system for my hands and my feet. I lead with my right, and I alternate each stroke as right, left, right, left, etc., regardless of whether each stroke is played with the hand or the foot. In using this system, I'll always come out of a pattern on my right hand and my right foot. I can use these patterns as one bar fills, or I can extend them for longer fills and solos. As far as beats go, especially if you're just getting started, uh, you want to concentrate on getting a nice, consistent single stroke roll going. That would be sixteenths or triplets. And uh, you might want to work towards that by playing simple hand patterns over it. Maybe uh, quarter note, backbeat on the snare, quarter notes on the cymbal, uh, eighths on the cymbal, offbeat cymbal pattern, paradiddles, because rudiments work really nicely. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'll play a couple measures of each of those. That sounds like this. Two, three, four. some patterns over triplets in the bass drum. One, two, three, four. Now these are more or less continuous patterns because the bass drum is uh, never letting up. Duh, 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 duh. You should also practice breaking up those patterns. Probably call them non-continuous beats. Here's an example of that. Two, three, four.
I started playing double bass drum in 1974. The main thing I noticed was the way that the kit instantly became more balanced. With a single kit, I always found that I was a little lop lopsided. The bass drum was here, snare drum, and it was, it was okay. I didn't really know anything different. But as soon as I put up that second bass drum, the whole kit, the perspective was, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And apart from two years, I think 1975 or 76, I have always played double bass drum. So it's been, it's been a long time now, these guys who've been together. That was Outback. The rhythm in this is very similar to Space Boogie, the track I did with Jeff Beck, but we locked off one of the beats, so it's in 6-4. The main thing about playing a track like this, or like Space Boogie, is pacing. It's a really high energy track. Double bass drums throughout the whole song, well, nearly throughout the whole song. And it's very easy to just blow the whole, all your cookies in, in the first song. And especially if this is put in the early part of the set, you've got to be fit to play the rest of the set after playing this song. So that's one of the things to really look out for when you're playing a, a high energy track. The other thing with a double bass drum track like this, it's not necessary to just go like, you know, slamming full out. It's actually better to be a little reserved because you'll find musically it will overpower everything. So it's best to just reserve it and keep it really, you know, keep the tension there. Um, and leave room for the odd accents 
leave the dynamic room as well. You'll notice when we get to the solo section, I really just pull back and let like Anthony just just ride in there to give Ray some space to solo. Uh, it's dynamics, but it's also pacing with a track like this. My right hand's playing a quarter note ride, and my left hand beats two and four on the snare. The eighth note triplet roll differs from the sixteenth note roll, in that the main bass drum plays on beats one and three, and the second bass drum on beats two and four. The snare and the second bass drum will fall together on beats two and four. If I isolate the main bass drum, it plays two quarter note triplets per measure. In each measure, the bass drum plays six notes, while the ride plays four. This is known as a six against four polyrhythm. By now playing the second bass drum between the notes of the main bass drum, the eighth note triplet roll is formed. Here I'm using eighth note triplets to demonstrate a few ideas for beats, fills, and solos. I can isolate the 16th note triplet and use it to form a figure known as a four-stroke rough. A common way to play the rough with one bass drum is by playing the triplet with my hands and completing the rough playing the fourth stroke on my bass drum. With two bass drums, I can play the triplet with my feet and play the fourth stroke with my hand. In this pattern, I can substitute the 16th note triplet for the two 16th notes that fall on the and of three. The triplet forms a four-stroke rough with the snare beat that follows it. I can combine the 16th note triplet with 16th notes to form hand-foot combination patterns. Since the 16th note triplet takes up a half a beat in 4-4, four, four, I can substitute the triplet for two 16th notes.
I can substitute a 16th note triplet for the two 16th notes that start on each downbeat. Here I'll substitute a 16th note triplet for the two 16th notes that start on the end of each beat. I can play a continuous string of 16th notes and at any time substitute a 16th note triplet for two 16th notes. The triplet in each case will form a four-stroke rough with the hand stroke that follows it. One of the little tricky things that uh, I think is actually a very good exercise for coordination is back to our dear friend, the paradiddle. And I've devised this little exercise which uses paradiddles on the bass drums and paradiddles on the snare drums, except one is half speed. So for example, the paradiddle on the snare drum will be half the speed to the paradiddles played on the bass drums. And this is a real mind bender, you know? Really gets the coordination going. So we'll start off with the bass drums and I'll add the paradiddle and the snare drum. And then of course, the other way around. gets the brain going. Another one which I discovered fairly recently is this little exercise which basically uses three beats with one hand being answered in triplet form with two beats by each bass drum. So I'll just play it really really slowly. We've got That's a real awkward one. And it's a good one to practice because if you can get around that one, then whichever side of the kit you're on, you can start things with one hand and then to the other. It's endless. <laughs> 